Say. You think your own pain, your own suffering is unprecedented or it's unique. You think it's only happening to you. Like everyone else is, you know, living their lives. They're not going through similar things. But then you read, you read books. And within those books, you encounter a multiplicity of stories, a multiplicity of existences, just like it exists in nature, you know, the diversity. When you look at nature, when you look at plants, when you look at trees, that diversity is already out there, but we human beings choose not to see it. So when you read literature, you are introduced into that pluralism of existences, and then you realize you are not alone. And that is why I think it is important that we celebrate this acronym, that we use it with a plus, LGBTQ+. At the end of the day, of course, there's only one word to which we all belong. There's only one word that belongs to all of us, and that word is human. Say. So today I want to talk about an acronym that I find very important, LGBTQ+. What does it mean? Does it matter? Let's take a close look at the word. Now, where I come from in Turkey, some people like to believe, they like to claim that all these words are new and they have been imported to us from the Western world, that in our society, traditionally, such things never existed. So it, in a way, it's a result of Westernization. It's a result of the corruption of traditional values, as they claim. That, of course, is pure nonsense. It is also ignorance. Because when you read history, when you read cultural history, um, social history, you will see that in all strata of society, in my motherland, in every nation, there were always people who were uh, who existed on a completely, you know, different spectrum of shades and colors, who did not necessarily see themselves, identify themselves as straight, but they do not necessarily have a word to define this. Or even if they try to express it, the society did not allow them to express it. So in terms of existence, in terms of stories, the existence of LGBTQ plus is as old as the story of humankind. Uh, but in terms of words, you might say, yes, we have seen a move towards a multiplicity of words, which I think is a very good thing. Um, that's why I always use a little plus when I talk about LGBTQ, I add that plus because I want to honor the experiences, the dignity of people who are not necessarily part of the first letters of the acronym. They're all, everybody is equally valid. So that multiplicity for me is important. Before I go any further, I also want to tell you that um, in many societies, uh, traditional societies, actually, there were concepts that we have forgotten in our modern times. So, for instance, across the Middle East, we use the term hunsa. When you look at the old texts and manuscripts, the term hunsa was used for intersex or non-conforming people. Across South Asia, there were the hijra. In Mexico, there were the muxes. In native Indian uh, indigenous tribes, we talk about two-spirit people. So the concepts existed, but sometimes they were erased or they were pushed to the periphery and forgotten and taken out of the public discourse. Now, does it matter to have all these words? I think it does, because it is a way of saying, this is who I am, right? I also exist. This is also my story. Most of the history that is taught to us is told through the eyes of people who have won. There's an inequality. In other words, within our history books, there are lots of untold stories. There are lots of silences. And the stories of LGBTQ plus are among those silences. So when you put a word to it, it is... It means that we recognize people's existence. We recognize their stories. Now, when I say this, as a writer, I'm also aware of the fact that there's a part of me that doesn't like labels. For instance, throughout my own literary journey, I've been called women writer, Turkish writer, you know, this writer, that writer. 
And there's a part of me that doesn't like that. Like many authors, I just want to be called a writer. That's it, you know, a storyteller. So I am not talking about being labeled or being put in a box, being pushed into a tribe and pigeonholed. That is not a good thing. And we should not allow that. That happens when other people describe and define our own existence, our own truth for us from above and from outside. And let us not uh, approve of that. But what I'm talking about, when we describe our own truth, when we say, look, this is who I am. Um, to me, this is important. Also, as a bisexual writer, it is important. When I read the works of James Baldwin, for instance, he has this beautiful essay, beautiful quote, in which he says, you think your own pain, your own suffering is unprecedented, or it's unique. You think it's only happening to you, like everyone else is you know, living their lives they're not going through similar things. But then you read, you read books. And within those books, you encounter a multiplicity of stories, a multiplicity of existences, just like it exists in nature. You know, the diversity, when you look at nature, when you look at plants, when you look at trees, that diversity is already out there. But we human beings choose not to see it. So when you read literature, you are introduced into that pluralism of existences. And then you realize you are not alone. And that is why I think it is important that we celebrate this acronym, that we use it with a plus, LGBTQ+. At the end of the day, of course, there's only one word to which we all belong. There's only one word that belongs to all of us. And that word is human. So